Hey everyone, uh, College Lighthouse here. Today we're going to talk about how to stand out despite being average on paper. Whether you're applying to college, applying to graduate school, or even trying to secure your first job, chances are you felt the worry of your application going unnoticed. We do live in a world of increasing competitiveness. Some stand out by having top test scores, while others stand out by having remarkable extracurriculars or you know, incredible life stories. However, not all of us can cure cancer or score in the 99th percentile. For example, I'm currently applying to med schools, and some of them have over 13,000 applicants with only like 2 to 3% acceptance rates. And so, although I did well in college, so did many of the other applicants. My stats are considered average at most places. That being said, I'm having a pretty successful cycle because I've learned how to make my essays really stand out. And so in this video, I'm just going to go over how you can boost your application in a similar manner by crafting and communicating a cohesive narrative. Alright, so crafting your story. The first step is to take a good hard look at your activities leading up to this moment. If someone were to read a list of your activities without any accompanying essays or cover letters, would they notice a common theme? Do your activities tell your story? Basically, try and find commonalities in each activity that support the narrative you want to present. So I'll give you an example to illustrate my point. I'm going to use applying to med school as an example, but um, this, this advice really applies to other fields as well. I'm going to read off two versions of the same story, basically two ways, two different ways that a certain narrative is framed. Story A or version A. Let's take Tony, a rising fourth year psych major applying to med school. Tony took an advanced biology class in high school and found it interesting. Tony also comes from a low-income neighborhood with a lot of homelessness. Growing up, he sees homeless individuals daily and notices a, pat a pattern. Many of them are mentally ill. With this in mind, Tony begins to wonder about the origins of their illness and if there's any way to help. He brings his curiosity to college and bases his choice of degree off it. He later joins an organization that serves the homeless. Here he meets a physician providing volunteer medical services. Inspired by his encounter with someone capable of understanding mental illness and having the capacity to improve lives, Tony begins to consider a medical career. He lands a job at a private practice to gain more clinical experience. Here he notices the disparities between the insured patients at work and the uninsured homeless. He spends the rest of college working at a free clinic, tutoring homeless children, and doing research on schizophrenia a topic that can relate to the homeless he sees. Tony gets, in quotes, average grades in undergrad, but he applies to med school with a purpose. Every one of his meaningful activities illustrates his commitment to the underserved. Because of the strength of his narrative, Tony has a good chance at getting in. So overall, that you know sounds like a really great narrative, a uh, really strong narrative, and it's um, a great one to present to admissions. That being said, there just for our purposes, I guess, there is a little, some, a little something off about the story. Um, it's a little too perfect. In the real world, very few progress from point A to point B in such a linear manner. So here's a more realistic version of Tony's story. So we'll call this uh, story B. Tony takes an advanced biology course in high school and thinks it's pretty cool, but nothing revolutionary. Tony is from a low-income neighborhood and observes a lot of homelessness, many of whom are mentally ill. Part of him feels bad, but there's not much he can do at this point. In college, he chooses um, to major in psych because it seems interesting. He has a passive interest in the medical field and jo joins a homeless outreach organization because volunteering will probably look good no matter what field he picks. Here, he becomes closer to the homeless population and finds the volunteer physicians inspiring. Tony commits to medicine but realizes his extracurriculars are lacking. He applies to countless clinical and research positions, hoping to land something. The only job he gets is in a private practice that sees few low-income patients, which is what he wanted his focus to be. He doesn't get to continue helping the underserved, but it's still good clinical experience, so he takes it. To strengthen his app, he volunteers at a free clinic and tutors homeless children. It also takes Tony forever to find a research lab willing to take him. The only lab duty he finds is watching flies procreate for four hours straight. However, a few months later, he leverages this experience to get into another lab, this time studying schizophrenia which is a topic that he actually finds interesting. Tony ends undergrad with, in quotes, average grades and applies to medical school. Whether, 
Tony gets in or whether you get in uh, depends on how you present your narrative. So in the previous examples, again, notice how story A and story B are essentially the same story. Tony does all the same activities. But story A finds commonalities in each activity and ties them together in a manner that really tells a story. No one's narrative can really be as perfect and linear as Tony's was in story A, but it's possible to craft one. Now, I'm not saying you should lie about anything. You never should, and you should never lie about your motivations or why you, know, you get involved in the things that you do. But that being said, I think it's important to take time to reflect on why you did the things that you do um, and basically just reflect on your path. Like I mentioned in a previous video, you should do stuff you like that leads you to the conclusion of why you want to enter your chosen field. For Tony, no matter which version, story A or story B, um, most of his activities illustrate a strong commitment to the underserved and the ones that don't still hold valuable lessons. Although the last sentence of story A reads, because of the strength of his narrative, Tony has a good chance at getting in. In reality, it should read, because of the narrative he presents, Tony has a good chance at getting in. The beauty of a cohesive narrative is to take your messy journey, like story B, and present it in a linear manner, like story A. To summarize, creating a cohesive narrative entails applicants emphasizing their personal story. What is your theme? What events and experiences led you to this moment? Really think about why you're motivated to do the things that you do. How you present yourself to admission staff and hiring managers is key. To answer these hard-hitting questions, applicants need to undergo thoughtful introspection. And this is honestly something that can take quite a bit of time. I mean, for myself personally, I think I took a month or two just crafting my personal statement essay. Your story doesn't have to be amazing. The objective here is for it to be well thought out and cohesive. Everyone takes a different path to get to where they are. By virtue of your narrative being your own, it'll be unique if communicated properly. That's about it for this video, so thank you for watching. Link to the full article and our website is below in the description box, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos.